Hi, Jet here. Welcome to my shop. Today, a little getaway from my everyday's record cutting lathes videos. I'm going to present you how to properly set up the tricky index plate on World Wur 1250 and similar machines. So, this video is for amateurs only. If you are a pro, you already know how to do that. So I have taken the part out just for better visibility and better access. But if your machine is already assembled, you may do that. Having your screwdriver and maybe a torch or a tool is good to take this part off for a better access. But it's not necessary as long as you, as you have this part already clean with proper greasing at it. If it all runs smoothly with no inner, inner dirt. Okay, so. The original manual says it's a matter of trial and error to set one, two, three, all of these parts. But in practice, the fact is that there is no trial or error. If you do the sequences step by step and make no shortcut, no shortcuts, you may set it up properly at the first time. Okay, so. I am going to do the step by step procedure, but it doesn't mean that the most important parts will be to be set up at the beginning. It's just a matter of the proper progress of the whole job. I have renamed two of the parts. These two have different names in the manual. This one is an engagement screw and this one is a release screw, okay? But I don't think these are the proper perfectly fitting names for them because these two elements are so linked in between that they just work as a pair okay to find the proper balance between them so i have renamed this one and for now it's called the first step of crank selector adjusting screw the crank selector is the part at the back which you probably already know okay i will not show this part anymore i will use this screw just for better visibility. As long as I move this screw now, the whole crank selector works too, okay? The other screw I have renamed is this one. It's the release screw as it's called in the manual, but I found think that driving pole clearance adjusting screw is just a better name for it. For it. Having these names, having these two named my way, I think helps to understand how this whole mechanism works so let's start i will start from scratch i'm having it all in complete complete disorder with these two very important screws moved back i won't set up this one now the over center spring it's going to be left as it was because it's very very unlikely that that this one had been tampered before so by now whatever position it is just leave it as it is please so i make a quick pause so you may screw these two back so tops of the threads do not come out of their nuts okay hope you got it already done so once the crank selector comes in the way of the pin it makes a move but it the move is divided into two steps. The first step, do not look on this part now because it's totally out of order right now. The first step is nothing more but to make a tension of this spring. This is what all the first step of the crank should be about. Okay, it's not like it should be right now. So the actually path, the distance, that the crank selector has to do is factory aligned, what I will show you in a minute. But what we have to do and what the first our first tasks first our task will be is to set the first part of the movement properly. As I said, the tensioning the spring is the only job we have to do once the first part of the move. Okay, so to make that we have to get the first thread, first step of crank selector adjusting screw and 
reduce the clearance between the top of the thread of the screw and this this part this steel part to zero okay there should be no clearance between that okay so take your time to take the screwdriver take your torch if it's already in the machine and let's screw it in okay a bit more please take your time when doing that it should be fine by now I don't know if you see that properly but there is no no distance in between right now okay take your time to do the same be careful because you may have a bad visibility right now if this part is already in the, in the machine be careful not to confuse both of the screws when you're once you're doing that okay once you have it done see how differently the crank selector acts now once we move that at the first the whole unit of these small poles stays still doesn't move okay up to the point up to the second point okay so it means that actually the first step of crank selector does its job properly okay the distance the range of the movement is fixed it's factory set by this gap in here by these two lips okay so there is no adjustment for the initial move of the selector crank it will always about this distance on but we have an impact on other of another movements of this whole unit okay so we've got the first move initially set up if we progress with the crank selector to the second step like that the driving pole will disengage from the ratchet wheel what what is exactly what we want so the question is if it's so simple what is the other screw about it's about the making proper clearance between the driving pole and the ratchet wheel in the time when the pole is engaged to the wheel if you have if you have a look right now the pole makes a pressure on the wheel which we don't want why because once the segment gear turns back to its starting point okay it needs to go around smoothly and the extra unnecessary load of the pole just makes this job much more difficult okay so to reduce the clearance between the driving pole and the ratchet wheel we use the driving pole clearance adjusting screw if i screw it in you will see i hope you will the clearance there the, the clearance between the pole and the plate will show up okay believe me it does <laughs> okay that's it you may feel it by gently moving the the wheel okay so you get it now okay let's try if the if adjusting the driving pole clearance adjusting screw if it tamp tampers some the our setup in some way okay let's make the first move of the selector crank it's fine let's make the second move it clicked okay the thing is that the selector crank has got like a two position engaged engage at position two a quick random position three which is will last only a little while and the position four that is right in the middle okay at the point two but the driving pole still sets still disengaged and actually this is the complete setup of these two screws 
What else may we do to make it working properly? As you see, this spring is responsible for the pressure of the driving pole, okay? If you want the machine working really smoothly and we want it really quiet, once the segment gear comes back to its rest position, we may do a trick, like reducing the tension of the screw, of the screw by unscrewing the first step of crank selector pole, but, but, but by making that, we have to screw in the driving place, the driving pole clearance screw also, okay? To get the proper clearance back again. So let's have a look. I've done too far with the first one. Still a little bit of the clearance, okay? That's fine. And see, now we have shortened a bit the spring that puts a pressure, extra pressure on the pole, but the cleaners is still fine. And our setup is going to still to be work properly. Oh, no properly, okay, sorry. I moved the first step of crank selector screw too much. Sorry, bad light. Okay, there should be no gap between this, the, this screw and this element, okay. I didn't see it because of the lack of light limit, okay. Still a bit some play, sorry. Okay, now it's fine. Have a look. So we've actually changed position of this screw a bit by moving one out and the other one in, but the device is still working. So actually it looks complicated, but there's a quite a bit range and um, just uh, like, uh, like freedom in adjusting these two. And the machine works Quiet, uh, quietest at the point where we have this spring here as short as possible. But you go, don't go too far because you'll ruin the setup. And once you and finally you go to the point where this part just touches the wheels. Okay, fine. Let's focus. Okay, so I will leave you with, for a while with these two. Okay, to adjust it and just say quick, quickly remind you that the first step should be like a only tension of the spring and the second one should be releasing the pole. Okay, coming back from the position three to position two doesn't close the driving pole. Okay, so take your time by now to do that. Just one more summary. First, we are acting with this screw. Once we have no clearance, once we have no clearance in here, we go to the other one. Okay, hope it's all done. And ho hope it works like this. Let me explain once again. First step, no movement of the parts visible. First step, step two, release of the pole. Step three, move back of the sector arm, move four, it's back in the rest position. We're there still with a bit of play between the, uh, still a uh, small clearance distance between driving pole and the ratchet wheel. So this is the proper setup. Okay, I'll be back to the over center spring right now. Let's make, what's, what, how to adjust it properly if it's this line. Let's make, let's imagine a virtual line between like the middle of this point where this clip is, right through this point where the spring is anchored. Well, if we do a line like this, if we imagine this line, straight line, the other side of the spring is going to be under the imaginary line with the pole engaged and over the line, oh, okay, if the pole disengaged, okay, we may adjust the virtual line with this screw by moving this bracket, but always try 
to set the engagement position a little bit down lower under the line, the virtual line than the disengaged position okay it will help for the machine to be stable once the segment gear makes the scanning of the drum if we make these points too symmetric i mean the up and down one the down uh, the uh, uh, up and down one there's a risk that the spring will just spring back itself with no reason okay so that's it but as i said the imaginary line between this point and this point will try will help you to understand how this over central spring works okay so we've done that and we are going to go to another the the, the second second chapter of what we want to go to do this is about index plate holding pole adjustment which is always like a try and error issue in the manual but there is no try and error in it we still may do it with the proper setting procedure i have no locking car in here okay it's a, it's another part of the of my shop i just took a kind of a screw okay but before we start what we are going to do now we have to be sure the first setup i was taking up talking about works properly fine i will put the index plate holding pole in here this is almost same position like in the machine and don't worry about the angles in here it really doesn't matter if it's set up here it's set up here or it's set up here okay to set up the index plate holding pole properly I assume it's it's not it's 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 uh, properly working. It's not like a stack or whatever, and the spring is here. This is one of the simplest job in here, but it looks very complicated in the manual. Once we engage the locking arm to have the whole index plate in place, that's a simple thing to do. I I I bet you know how to do that. Once we have it stiff obviously with no selector pin protruding all need to be leveled once we've got that it's nothing more than move the pole so it contacts the protruding thing teeth nothing more okay there are like like a long holes in the mounting so that it will be easy to slide up and down so all you have to do is to make it touching one of the gears. There should be no play in here. It's not a matter of the play, okay? You have to set up for the pole to be touching the gear. I tell you why. Once the pole touches the gear, we are absolutely sure. Does it? Okay. That once the locking arm locks the wheel, it will slide in smoothly, okay? If this part is disaligned, I mean there's a gap in here. There will always be a bit of the, sorry for that. <laughs> there will still be a little bit of the move of the index wheel once the lock arm slides in. But what we want is the lock arm sliding very very smoothly between the gears so it only be it, the, the, it's only uh, it is only possible to be done when the plate just touches the wheel with no play with no clearance okay once we have it done and you have it the pole tightened you may even try sorry it's still not touching i want it to be i wanted it to be to be to be understandable at, and with good visibility so okay that's it i want it okay that's it once the pole is here and it's touching the gear have a look with the lock arm released 
you may try on any other positions that anytime you lock the arm, the arm will slide smoothly into the index plate holding pole, into the into the, into the, the into the gap, because the plate because the whole index plate will be pushed back for no clearance here by the spring. Okay, so there is no more adjustment you have to do with the index plate holding pole. Despite there's a lot about it in the manual. Okay, so once you have it done, we may release that and we may go to the third screw, which is called selector crank to index plate adjusting screw. What this one means? This one doesn't interfere with all of this setup. This one doesn't interfere with the index plate holding pole. Okay, and it's actually quite safe screw to work with because it slightly disengages the selector crank from the whole unit. And it's, it's very easy to be set up. Once we have the, once we have the scanning finished, and the cam cancels the pin, it springs back forward. Once it's there after its job done, it's just enough to adjust it. So this tip of the selector crank is right between the two pins. Once it's here and we tighten that screw, the whole machine should work properly. Okay. So let's remind from the beginning. The first step is to move these two back. Second step, let's screw this one back in for no clearance between top of the thread and this block, there's no clearance. The next stage is to screw this one in for a proper clearance between the pole and the ratchet wheel. The third, the, the, the extra, another but not necessary step is to move the, ten, the, 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 the just screw back for a less tension of the spring, but this one needs to be bit more forward, but it's a necessary step. Next step is to check the over center spring, but it's not necessary. This one is actually is usually fine. Next step is locking the arm with the lock, lock arm and sliding up and down index plate for the pole to be touching the one of the gears when lock arm is engaged. And the last part is to adjust the the crank selector this position. So once it cancels the pin, it's it it uh, lands right in between the two pins. Okay, of the drum. Thank you.